Hello and welcome to take 387 of my fourth video. The downside of using a phone to record YouTube videos is that if you press the wrong button, as I have done, you will record a 17 minute video and then stop it halfway through speaking. With no video editing software, I can't put that back in together, so it would have been rubbish and I've stopped. So as the video is titled, I am looking at list building in heresy. And more notably, I'm attending an event at Warhammer World in July, which was originally going to be version one, and now they've switched over to version two, which means I now need to try and work out what to take. I want to explain to you why I'm taking particular things. Um, what to take without knowing A, rules, and B, points costs, which is fun. Uh, I'm not too angry at Warhammer World for making this change, as they, has, they have either offered us a full refund for the ticket, we can move our ticket to the November event when more rules will be available, or we can attend in July and have a free ticket November, which is just a no-brainer for me. Let's go and learn to play Heresy 2.0 with other like-minded individuals and then figure things out a bit better in November. Now, why do a video about list writing? Well, point is, I've attended an awful lot of events, uh, primarily at Warhammer World, because I love them. They are for me, I really enjoy them. Some people might not, but they are exactly what I want from a heresy event. So I really enjoy going there. Why am I doing a list writing video? Well, because it pops up all the time on social media, in groups, in discords, on Reddit and all sorts about what's the right way and wrong way to go about building a list. Well, I'm here to tell you, in my opinion, there is no right or wrong way to build a list. It's entirely down to you and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. At the end of the day, we all play this game for different reasons and all of those reasons are valid. If you like to play competitively, play competitively. Find other people that want to play competitive, have fun. If you want to play narrative, find other people that want to play narrative, have fun. In my opinion, and I, this is someone who's been on the receiving end of, of abuse for it. Well, no, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say abuse. This is not like, oh, woe is me. So don't, don't take that from it. Um, people are always going to judge you on your lists regardless. And the more prominent those lists become on groups and the more people talk about them the more criticism you will receive and most of that criticism is complete rubbish and some of that criticism is completely valid and will make you think as it has for me for the event in july originally thinking it was the final event of version one of heresy i wanted to take a list that i would never taken before and i didn't think i'd be able to take again which was uh, a legio ataris warhound maniple so two warhounds uh with uh knight support and I thought that would be really cool. Big toys, get them out. Uh, consensus from people. And I haven't, these people haven't directly said anything to me, but the thing is about internet groups and stuff like that. If you say something about someone, someone, yeah, they're going to find out. So people, uh, in fact, one of the, the, the terms I was universally hated, which is quite impressive. I'm quite proud of that, um, for daring to take... Um, a pair of warhounds to a competitive event. Now, if I was playing someone new to the game or was playing a friend in a casual game of heresy, no, I would never in a million years rock up with a pair of warhounds. Never. If I'm going to an event that is by and large competitive and it's within the list building rules of the event and the rules of the game, sure, it's it's fair fair game. Now, that sound, makes me sound a bit dickish, and I don't mean to sound that way. Um, I think it's evening. I've had a long week at work. I've only just got my son to bed, and I just, I'm just i just tired of hearing these kind of... Um, the, the right way to play the game that I hear from people. But it did make me think that, actually, the reason I don't mind taking two Warhounds is because the people I play with tend to take quite tough lists, and our armies are shaped like that, so... Two Warhounds, to me, they don't, they probably don't invoke the right amount of fear that they might in, into other people. I'm like, yeah, they can do damage, but they're not that hard to kill. Um, and that got me thinking about this building and how you approach things. And these two terms that pop up all the time on social media, I can get on social media, on, in conversation of narrative versus competitive. And I, I just think the whole concept of it is utter bollocks competitive is a completely legitimate way to play any game and actually 
all games are competitive because if you're not playing to win the game, why? Uh, when I'm playing a game, I'm I'm not taking my strongest things, I'm not taking my weakest things, but I am still trying to win, and it doesn't matter whether I'm playing Heresy or 40k or Uno. I'm still trying to win at the end of the day, and I'm trying to have fun whilst doing it. Um, and I have to admit that if I'm completely honest, I've never once considered the fun of my opponent, which is a, a real failure of me as a person. It is, and that's not sarcasm, that's genuine. I don't. If I'm going to an event, I'm not thinking, what is my army going to be like to play against? My first port of call is, how is that army going to look on the table? This is my personal approach. I'm like, what does that army look like? Because I want it to look good. I want it to look right. I, I want to be proud of what I'm using. Um, I want it to have a theme. And more often than not, those themes turn out to be quite strong. And this is another like counterpoint. Narrative does not mean rubbish. You can be narrative and have a really competitive army. And you can have a competitive army that's very narrative. And the two are not mutually exclusive. The way you build an army, the way you play the game, is by and large dictated by the people you play it with. That wonderful world meta. And they're the people that matter. They're the people that matter about your army list writing because they're the people you play day in, day out. Um, and, yeah, sure, you don't want to go to an event and steamroll five opponents um or you might i don't know it depends on how you, you approach the game but i think if you go to an event you've got to expect within the the confines of the of the rules for that event and the army list you've got to think about the the potential things that you will face and you've got a des decision to make to go am i going to make my army list designed to take on these things or am i just going to like chance that i don't face them and or if i do face them chalk it up for a loss and move on um now i want to state state this is this is my personal opinion i said at the start i'll do opinion videos there's no there's far too many opinion videos on youtube but actually do you know what no in this case i think it is important to get across my point um and if you disagree that please feel free i like i don't want this to be an echo chamber if you disagree please feel please do comment below and let's have a conversation about it because it's the only way you can learn more about differing viewpoints it doesn't mean i'm necessarily going to agree with you but I'd, I'd certainly like to hear it um so onto this event i've now got to uh build and paint a two thousand well three thousand point heresy army where i don't know the points and i don't know the rules and i've got to make some assumptions so the assumptions i'm making are that by and large version two is still the same game as version one with some tweaks and some changes and there might be some fundamental changes but I think force organization force organization charts will be largely the same. We'll have HQ and two troops, uh, and then we'll have X number of heavy support, elites, fast attack, um, and additional troops and HQ slots within that. Rights of war will still be a thing. Rights of war is is kind of what makes legions what legions are. And for those of you that are new to heresy that are watching this video, hi, welcome. Sorry to hear me rant on a, on a Friday evening, but. Um, Essentially, there aren't a lot of troops choices in, in Heresy. You've pretty much got tactical marines, breaches, and assault marines. Um, and they're quite what I'd call vanilla. You know, there's there's nothing particularly special about those. Uh, breaches currently are quite overcosted and, and don't work in every uh, every situation. Um, tactical marines are pretty cheap, but pretty easy to kill. Um, and assault marines are, so again, kind of quite specific to what you're trying to do with an army. Um the way that you can change that and change those troops is through rights of war. So there's many rights of war out there, things like armoured breakthrough that allow you to take predator tanks as troops. Um, the uh, uh, drop pod assault uh, right of war, um, which allows you to take drop pods as a dedicated transport for your troops. Um, there are white scar ones that allow you to turn jet bikes into troops and so on and so forth. Um, so I kind of wanted to use this video as a sort of like a... A snapshot of how I approach army list building. Um, so some points to factor in straight away. So the first and most important thing for me with my army is how an army looks. That's that's be all and end all. It's really sort of vainglorious, but it's it, for me, I spend an awful, I, I spend more time painting than I do playing. And I want my army to look cohesive. I want it to look attractive. And I want it to look right, if that makes sense. Um, 
The second point is I want it to have a theme. It needs to be themed in some way. And again, I put that caveat in there. Themed does not mean not good. It doesn't mean that it's not competitive. It just means that the things make sense alongside each other. Um, and then third and foremost, uh, third, third, not and foremost at all. And thirdly um, is, uh, do I actually like the units that I'm using? I, I will never take a unit just because it's good. And I will never take a unit just because it looks pretty. It's got to kind of have a combination of both. So um, with this event in mind and um, completely spitballing and guessing, uh, I know that there are sort of playtest versions of this game that got leaked with points values, but I haven't looked at them. Um, I have had friends that have shared little tidbits here and there with me, but I don't know if that's going to be the final version, so I'd rather just stay away from it and wait for that. And I'm really hoping it's it's soon. Um, but as like my most recent model that I've painted for the Dark Angels has been, well, actually it was a Contemptor, but before that it was Marduk Cedrus, which I did a video on. Um, he's uh, an Eschaton of the Dreadwing, which is one of the six wings of the Hexagrammaton of the Dark Angels. And if you've watched any early videos, you know that I've got a bit of a Dark Angel fetish. And um, uh, in fact, every video so far has featured Dark Angels in some way. I might as well rename the channel to Dark Angels Channel or something wittier. Um, but at the moment, because it's what I'm working on, it's what I'm sharing. Um, I do have a Mechanicum, uh, Mechanicum army, I do have a Knight army, I do have the starts of a uh, Imperial Militia army, but because I'm working on Dark Angels, that's what I've got. If you don't like Dark Angels, now's the perfect time to turn it turn, turn off. But if you don't like Dark Angels, you probably wouldn't be watching this video in the first place because that's all you can see on the screen. You've just heard me witter at you whilst you look at some of my models. So most of you that are into the heresy will know this stuff. And those of you that aren't, let me explain to you what you've got in front of you. So you've got Marduk Cedrus, who is an HQ choice. He is an Eschaton of the Dreadwing, and he has a keyword in the current... And, oh, sorry, by the way, everything I say is about the current edition of the game because I don't know what the next edition of the game is. But these are all assumptions that I, may, that I think will be in both. So he has a keyword. He has a special rule that... Uh, quite a lot of the named characters have and certain characters like Praetors and Delegatus have called Master of the Legion. If you have the Master of the Legion rule currently in um, Heresy, that allows you to take a Rite of War. And a Rite of War is what makes a Legion a Legion in my, eye, in my eyes. And it makes list building really, really fun. So when you hear people say, oh, Heresy's just Marine or Marine, uh, yeah, by and large it is, but that doesn't mean that's not fun because rights of war change that and they can make it really interesting. So one of the rights of war that the Dark Angels, and the Dark Angels have six unique Legion rights of war, which is way more than anyone else, but they're the first Legion and they're the best, so why not? Uh, one of them is called the Eschaton Imperative. And I mentioned that he is an Eschaton of the Dreadwing. Um, Eschaton means dis destroyer of worlds, basically. So it's a right of war of the Dark Angels' nastiest, shit that they take to a battle to destroy worlds these guys next to them are one of the dark angels um three special units that have models uh, they have even more than that that don't have models yet but this is the dreadwing unit so the dreadwing unit are called dreadwing interrupters and they are essentially all, all intents and purposes tactical marines that are armed with dark age of technology weapons they're armed with these things called plasma burners which in the current edition of the rules are an incredibly short range bolt gun that's ap2 which means that it carves through all armor in the game so it'll go through terminators and space marines just as easily uh, but you've got to get them in the right position to do that because they've got really short range they're also fiendishly expensive both money wise and points wise I think they come in at roughly, this unit comes at roughly 330 points, which is a lot for a 10-man unit of power armor. These two guys here, by the way, have got plasma incinerators, which are um, basically a heavier version of that. It's a salvo weapon, which is a stupid mechanic, and I hope that misses, um, that goes missing for the next version of the game. Uh, so they're quite low strength, but they're high AP. Now... From the previews that we've seen so far, Plasma has lost that AP, but has gained a rule that means that it still gets AP to it, still ignores armour, essentially, uh, if you roll a certain thing to wound. So I'm hoping these guys get something similar. I'm not expecting them to be AP2. I'm expecting them to still be strength 4. Um, and I'm hoping to God they're a lot cheaper in points. Um, I really like Interruptors, and I've got 10 of them. I've only got 10 of them because that's 100 quid. So that's a lot of money to spend on a unit that I'm not going to use very often. However, 
if I want to do an Eschaton imperative list, I can only take these or destroyer squads as troops, and I don't own any destroyer squads at all. The advantage of these is that I like the fact that they're Dark Angel only. Uh, fortunately for me, I have some other friends who also have 10-man units of uh, Interrupters, and um, through the application of short-term loan high-interest beatings, I have managed to acquire 20 more of these, which I need to be to paint up. So I now have three squads of 10 uh, to take in that. Right, so the idea is to build a whole Dreadwing force. So I've got the idea is 30 of these guys. Don't know what they do, but they look cool. My Leviathan, which has never been used in a game, but when I painted it and built it, I built it as a Dreadwing Leviathan. So the Dreadwing I mentioned in an earlier video, they're the Dark Angels purveyors of weapons of the Dark Age, uh, things that are questionable morally uh, and quite destructive and awesome. Uh, this one is armed with a science cannon of doom, a Grav Flux Bombard. It has uh, two twin-linked uh, Volkite Calivers and a Phosphex Discharger, which Phosphex is one of my favourite weapons in the game. Not necessarily in rules, just in concept of sentient, like, napalm. Uh, radioactive napalm, let's not forget that, forget that, and that's very Dreadwing. So I've never used this, he's already Dreadwing, so he's in the list. He's in a heavy support choice, so I've got three troops, three of these is troop choice, an HQ, and a heavy so far. Now, uh, this guy over here I also showed in an earlier video, this is my Moratat. They are traditionally attached to destroyer companies, lone gunmen that go around murdering people with Phosphex and... Um, He's really dusty. Uh, Phosphex and, in the case of this one, Plasma. But they can also have Volkites and all sorts of things. Um, he has to go and he's one of my favourite characters to use. If he still has rules, he's definitely in as a second HQ choice. And then this is a Sakaran Punisher. I love the Sakaran tank. Again, it's very iconic heresy vehicle. And they've announced there's a plastic version coming, which is really, really cool. This is the Omega Varen, which has a large rotary barreled belt-fed Gatling gun. Uh, and if for those that know me and those that don't know me, my rules are if a model has the option of taking a really great multi-barreled Gatling gun with a belt feed, then it has to take a multi-barreled Gatling gun with a belt feed. I love it. Uh, absolutely love it. Never used it in game. So that I want in the list as well because I like the tank and it's quite sort of dreadwing like quite a rare pattern. I have another Sakaran that I haven't painted yet, which is a Sakaran Omega, which is a, like a missile launcher top to it that can fire like radioactive warheads. So I figured that was quite Dreadwing as well. So that already sort of tops me out in version one in terms of heavy support. So we've got that, that, and then the other Sakaran, that would be three heavy support choices. So I'm maxed out with those. Um, none of them being chosen specifically for rules. They're all chosen for how they look and how good they are. But a Leviathan... They've always been good. I can't imagine this one won't. I have no idea what this one is. I don't see many people using them. That doesn't mean it's not good, but I don't think it'll be rubbish. It's still a Sakaran. And the Arcus is very popular, which means I assume it's very good uh, and looks cool as well, so fits in with the theme. What I've got to fit in around that now is what else I put in the list because I've probably got about a 1,000 to 1,250 points spare in a 3K list after I factor in all those things. Now, the biggest assumption I've got to make, currently, Interrupters can only take Land Raider Proteus as a dedicated transport. And a Land Raider Proteus is A, really expensive um, in points and money, uh, and B, I don't own any Land Raider Proteus, so that creates some problems straight off the bat. Uh, also, if I was going to chuck those in, that's 750-odd points already straight on Land Raider transports. Now, I do like Land Raiders, but all my Land Raiders are Proteuses, uh, Phobuses, because if I want a Land Raider, I want to be able to charge out of it. I want it to have the assault capacity. But I do have Rhinos, so I'm really hoping that these guys get access to a Rhino as a dedicated transport, and then that makes life a lot easier for me. In addition to that, I want to put my um, Inner Circle Knight Cenobium, which are the guys that I had in the previous video, you know, the, the Dark Angel-specific Terminators with the Tyrannic Greatswords and Plasma Flamers. Um, I'd like to have those in because Mardic Cedrus is right, uh, Warlord trait literally allows him to take a unit of those. Um, I've got a Terminator squad, a Cataract squad with Combi Volkites. I'd like those in a Land Raider. Um, so I'd quite like those. Uh, I've got a Contemptor, and I would really like one of the new Contemptors painted up in Dreadwing colours for the army. And then maybe a vet, Veteran squad. I don't want to have any sort of line, normal, like tactical Marines, Predators, and things like that. I want 
everything in the army to have some kind of um, esoteric nastiness about it. And I don't mean nastiness in rules, just in the sense that that's sort of the background of, of what that army is. So the whole army's been built around a theme, but I'm not 100% there yet. So I'm just going to plod on and paint and hope for the best. Um, I'm really intrigued if you go into the event, what you're planning on taking and why. Um, I'm really intrigued if you disagree with anything that I said in this video, please feel free to comment below because I think that's important we have that conversation. I won't necessarily agree with you, but I think it's important. I think it's valid. Um, if you're just getting into heresy, tell me what you're interested in or if you've got any questions, please fire them below. Um, I've gone on a 20 minute rant about something or nothing that doesn't affect anyone's life. It's not exactly visually stimulating, but I've had fun and let's be honest, like that's the whole point of this if no one watches it that's fine if lots of people watch it that's great um i found this whole process so far really cathartic so uh thank you if you've watched my videos so far and um i know there's been a lot of requests in there for various different things i do want to do a showcase of my mechanicum i do want to do some painting videos particularly basing and dark angels as my dark angels run at the moment but if there's anything else you can think of that you'd like me to do then please do um Enjoy your weekend, uh, stay safe and long live the heresy.